Now, other things to help in your classroom is when children have to listen to you teach briefly a particular lesson or concept. All students should have a pencil in their hand while you're teaching, and all students, but especially the ADHD student, needs to have their hand moving. They need to be actively listening and engaging with the lesson you're trying to teach. And that kind of note taking or making little pictures or doodling on the page about what you're talking about, let them put down what they want to help remember what you're teaching. But that engages them because it involves movement. It allows them to take notes, to actively process what you're teaching, and then they will have a physical reminder on their notes of what you're teaching. Remember, they have a working memory problem. They're not going to retain or comprehend what you are teaching as well as other students. And by doing continuous note taking, they are now going to have a written record to help back up their working memory problem so they better comprehend the lesson that you're trying to teach. Now for reading, we can improve working memory and reading comprehension using a system we call SQ4R. That's an abbreviation for the steps of the approach we want you to take when you're reading. So the S stands for survey what you've been asked to read. If it's a short chapter, leaf through it. Look at the structure. Look at how it's laid out. Then go back to the beginning. So survey the material you're to read. Next, you need a series of questions you're going to be asked to answer when you are done reading that material. That encourages engagement with the material because you know you're going to be examined on it when you're done. You're going to have to answer the questions. Then we do the four R's. Read a paragraph. Recite out loud what was important in that paragraph. Write down those important things. Then read back what it is that you wrote down. So you're engaging the material four times. You're reading it, you're reciting the important detail, you're writing down the detail, you're reviewing and reading what you wrote. SQ4R. And this improves reading comprehension tremendously in ADHD children. Otherwise, if you don't do this, the ADHD child starts reading, gets partway down the page, can't remember what the story was about, has to go back to the top paragraph again, and has to do this repeatedly in order to refresh their memory of what it was the story is about. Other students are seven pages ahead of them by the time they finish that first page. So since it's going to take that long anyway, let's do something constructive with that time and have them read slowly, recite, write, and review. And then they retain it. There are various organizational devices that you can get to help in your classroom. I won't spend much time on this, but teachers obviously know to have notebooks and dividers and what we call color-coded binders, where math goes in the yellow binder and the reading or the literature assignment goes in the green and so on, so that children are organized with their material for each of their classes and making sure that they have what they need at their workspace or at their desk, that their desk is organized rather than trashed and disorganized. So ADHD children need help being organized and staying organized, and you can help them do that with various organizational devices available to you. If necessary, spend some extra time each week after school tutoring the ADHD child, or just have them stay and do their homework with you so that you can supervise that and see how they're doing. Maybe you can send home or recommend to parents um, extra books or videos or maybe recommend a tutor to them that can work with that student once or twice a week to make sure that they're staying up with their homework and their lesson plans. There are a variety of learning devices that we can recommend to families to back up school outside of school with reminders or, or with practice, that is, of the material. Now, in addition, of course, there are now online websites that parents can go to if their child struggles with a particular subject matter, like arithmetic. They can go to Khan Academy, K-H-A-N Academy dot org. And there are lessons there for children from kindergarten all the way through college on most major subjects that we ask children to learn. 
These are programmed learning programs designed just for children to do online learning, and we find that children pay much more attention and learn much more from program learning than they might from what a teacher is lecturing about in school. So look for things like Khan Academy. Children with ADHD have trouble with motor coordination. So although we teach them handwriting, we also need to be teaching keyboarding on a computer keyboard because they're going to be doing more typing in their life than any earlier generation has done. So while we want them to learn to write, don't emphasize writing so much for doing lessons or writing reports and so on, but allow them, if necessary, to be able to type out what they want to say and turn in a printer uh, printout of what you ask them to do. Another strategy for helping students in school, especially with their behavior, is the behavior contract. This is where teachers and students meet and decide on an academic goal. I am going to get 80% of my arithmetic done or 90% done accurately each day. And we write this down in a contract. And then having written it down, each person initials it or signs it. The contract also specifies what the student is going to earn for achieving that goal each day. And it specifies what they might lose if they don't reach the goal. So there's an element of some discipline involved here, a penalty or a fine. But behavior contracts are a way that teachers can negotiate with ADHD children around specific problem areas in order to encourage them to try to improve in that area by offering explicit and immediate rewards and yes, occasionally, some penalties or discipline. But it makes it very clear to the ADHD child what they are to do. Another strategy that some of my colleagues in the US have shown works successfully for ADHD children is peer tutoring. This is where we have students teach each other a particular lesson. So the teacher will distribute the lesson, what she wants to teach, he or she may go over the lesson very briefly. What are the concepts? What's the skill? What do we want you to learn? And then the students pair up in twos. One of them will be the teacher. One is the student. And for this particular time period, the teacher goes over that material again with the student. And then after that's done right, and the students are finished, we can go through and look at the papers and see what was right and what was wrong. And then for the next concept or the next lesson, we break the students up into new pairs so that you're never with the same student. And you can alternate who's the student and who's the teacher so that one time you're the teacher, the next time you get to be the learner or the student. We have found that children pay more attention to other children when they have to learn something, then they pay attention to you as an adult. It's just the way children are wired psychologically. Their peers are more important to them. So consequently, use the peers to teach. And here are some strategies for doing that. Now, I've already mentioned this, but I'll say it again. We have to increase motivation incentives for the child with a self-motivation disorder. So we have to provide more praise, approval and appreciation. And I've mentioned being a one minute manager, wandering the classroom and giving approval and praise and tokens and points to the children who are listening, but particularly the ADHD child. So using a token system where points or poker chips or other tokens are given like money to ADHD individuals for the work that they're doing are very useful incentive strategies for improving motivation and productivity in your classroom. Now, obviously, students need to have access to these rewards with their tokens. What can they buy in your classroom with the tokens or the points that you're giving out? And so we ask teachers to organize shelves in their classroom with different levels of desirable play activities. Some of them are things that children are fairly bored with. Those aren't going to cost very much. Some of them are really exciting things many children like to interact with, including maybe some video games. 
And as a result, we're going to charge a lot more points for you to be able to play that activity. Several times a day then, children are allowed to take their points and shop around the shelves and choose what they wish to play with and then pay you, that is cash in, their points just like they would if they were at a store. They're going to buy that privilege with the points that they've earned. If you don't have a lot of uh, play activities or toys or games or things, ask parents at home when they clean out their home to donate the toys that their children are no longer playing with so that you can collect these kinds of toys in your classroom that other children might enjoy using anyway. It's a great way to get free toys and privileges to use in your uh, classroom token system. And be sure to allow the student to have access to the privileges several times a day. Don't make them work all week long in order to cash in the points on Friday. Again, you've delayed the consequences. And as I said at the beginning, that is a disaster for a child with an executive disorder like ADHD. We have to keep the consequences near to the behavior we're trying to encourage. Um, and so we want children to be able to exchange their points frequently across the day. If you're going to use a point system, make sure that you're always giving away twice as many points for good behavior as you might be taking back in penalties for misbehavior. That ensures that this reward program is an incentive, is a reward program and not just a discipline program. On the other hand, if you are taking away as many points as you're giving for good behavior, then you're going to have a child who has zero points and isn't going to be willing to listen to you anymore. There's no motivation in that kind of program. So make sure that you don't do what adults are tempted to do, and that is to rely too heavily on punishment as a means of dealing with children and their misbehavior. The better strategy is to rely more on rewards and incentives. And then when we have to penalize the children, it is effective at doing so. Other ways of rewarding children are using groups of children who work together to succeed as a team. And then the team gets rewarded for doing the assignment as a group and they can compete with each other and the other teams in the classroom. Be sure that you mix up the teams periodically so children don't get too what we call cliquish. They don't start forming their own little group uh, that stays together too often over time. We want to mix up the teams and make sure that the ADHD child circulates among the various teams. But the teams work together using peer influence to encourage the ADHD child to work harder and stay on task. You can also use what we call the tone tape method of reward, where you create on a digital recording device or maybe an older cassette tape player you simply create a random series of musical notes or bells or chimes. It doesn't matter what note you use, but it is to be random and frequent. And then when children are working at their desk, you play this recording and you tell the children, I'm going to turn on this tape player now or this recorder. And whenever you hear a bell ring or a piano key chime, right, you stop Ask yourself if you were working. If you were working on your work, give yourself a point so every child has a little card that they can record their points on. If you weren't working, you have to put a minus on your card. Right? And then the children return back to working again. But this is like gamblers who are playing slot machines. You never know when the bell is going to ring. And so the best strategy to optimize the rewards is to always be working. And then you catch every bell and get every reward. We found that within one week of using this kind of tone reward tape or recording, children were doing 96% of their work at their desk on their own and recording their points. Of course, after the assignment is done, the children are allowed to spend their points to play for a few minutes with privileges in the classroom. So you've got to back up the point system with more powerful rewards. Here's a device called the Attention Trainer that's available in the U.S. You Maybe you'll be able to obtain it where you are as well. Uh, and you put the box on the desk and it's just a digital counter 
that has a red light on the top and it has a buzzer inside. And this is how it works. When you want the child with ADHD to work at their desk, you put the box on the desk, you turn the box on, and it starts rewarding the student with a point a minute for working. And then what do you do? Well, the box doesn't know if a student is working. It's just going to be dispensing a point a minute. But with that transmitter that you see here on the screen, you're going to have that clipped to your belt or your dress. And as you wander and you teach and you supervise, if you notice the ADHD child isn't working, you push their button. Notice that you can have four different boxes in the classroom for four different students. Push the button. What does that do? The red light flashes, the buzzer sounds, and a point is subtracted off the counter. So that the box is doing the frequent rewards, so you don't have to do it, you are dispensing the penalties when the child is off task. Again, you only need to use this for a week or two to train up on task behavior. Here are two devices that are little vibrators with digital timers built into them. And a child wears the device, right? And you can program the device to go off randomly or to go off at fixed intervals like every 10 or 15 minutes or maybe every two or three minutes, right? But we like the randomness of it, right? And it works the same way where the child is going to wear the device, turn it on, and whenever the device vibrates, it's a reminder to you, are you working? Are you on task? If you are, you get to give yourself a point, just like we did with the recording. So both of these devices, the invisible clock and the motivator, are ways that children can have nonverbal cues that are random, but that encourage them to be aware, stay on task, keep working, and earn their rewards. Another way of encouraging rewards at school is to use a home-based reward program. And here are all the requirements of such a program. Uh, we use daily report cards, and I'll show you one in just a second. But we're going to have a report card that lists the positive behaviors that we're looking for, and it's going to be completed by each teacher. They're going to give the student a rating, a number, as to how well they did. And then this card is going to go to each teacher across the day who's going to fill it out at the end of their subject as to how the student did in meeting the goals for that classroom. So the student is getting frequent feedback at the end of each class. And that, as you know, is very helpful to ADHD students. And then the report card goes home, and now the parents know how the student did that day. And then the parents can convert the report card into points that the student can spend in a home point system. Here's an example. Here's a card that lists over on the left-hand side the goals for that student for that day. How well did they participate in class? How well did they get their classwork done at their desk? How well did they follow rules? How well did they get along with other students? Did they complete and turn in their homework assignments? And so at the beginning of the day, whoever the first teacher is, the student is going to give them this card and the teacher is going to fill out their column with numbers from one to five. One is excellent, five is terrible, or some number in between. And so the teacher rates the student on how well they did and then initials the bottom so parents know this is not a forgery. The card goes to the next teacher and then the next teacher. And across the day, all of the teachers will eventually be giving feedback to this student. So notice the student is getting very frequent feedback at the end of each class as to how well they did in that class. The card goes home at the end of the day and the parents review the card with the student. What were the good numbers? What were the bad numbers? Why did they get those bad numbers? What could they do tomorrow to do better where those bad numbers occurred? And then the parent is going to reward their child this many points for a one or a two or a three. So the points are listed in parentheses. Notice that the negative behavior, excuse me, didn't mean to change that, Notice that negative behaviors right, are minus points. So the 
parents then are going to reward the student with positive numbers, they're going to subtract out the penalties, and the balance is what the student has to spend on home privileges that the parents have created a menu of at home with different costs for each of those privileges. So that electronic gaming or using their smartphone or playing outside with friends or going to a movie or watching a special television program, all of these are going to have points assigned to them and the child has to earn them through how well they behaved at school. Now here's a very simple report card if you don't want to use something more complicated like the last one. Again, it lists the behaviors we want the child to do, right? And the teacher simply rates it yes or no. Did the student do that that day? So this is a much simpler program with a much simpler set of rewards uh, associated with it. You might get 10 points for every yes on the card, for instance. And then it the, goes home and the parents are able to see how the student did. This card also has room on it for the student to put their homework assignment on the card as well. So there's a variety of ways that families can use this program to encourage the student to behave better at school and for teachers to give more frequent feedback. Now I mentioned that transitions are very difficult for